you're watching just the news i'm amita balachandra let's get straight to our top story we're starting off with the karnataka hijab case uh, that's uh, going on in the karnataka high court uh, high court heard the writ petitions on the hijab ban controversy today and has in turn adjourned the hearing to tuesday 2:30 pm now senior advocate devdutt kamath who is appearing for the petitioner said hijab is protected under the religious freedoms granted by the constitution and no college development body is equipped to take a call on whether it can be banned in view of public order violation now kamat argued that if core religious uh, practices harm or offend public order they can be regulated under article 251 article 251 is all persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and the right to freely profess practice and propagate religion Last week if you remember the court had passed an interim order directing students to not wear hijab bagwa uh, in any in uh, educational institutions which have prescribed dress code uh, till the high court decides this particular case Meanwhile as a precautionary measure section 144 was uh, has been imposed in Udupi and Mangaluru for the next six days and this is within 200 uh, meter radius of all schools and colleges schools reopen from monday colleges i mean while are on holiday till the 16th of february now speaking to a section of media persons in hubli karnataka congress mla zameer ahmed has made some shocking statements now he said that wearing hijab will protect muslim women from heinous crimes such as rape In a video shared by news agency ANI, he can be seen saying, and I quote: "The concept of hijab is to keep girls where they when they grow up behind a parda to hide their beauty. Their beauty should not be visible. I think India has the highest number of rape cases in the world. It is because the women are not doing parda." End quote. He also added that, uh, and I quote: "Wearing of hijab is not compulsory, and this has been the practice for years." Moving on to other news coming in from across the country. Trigger warning for people who are watching right now. The next piece of news is extremely disturbing. It's coming in from Delhi. Uh, an 87-year-old woman was allegedly raped in West Delhi's Tilak Nagar. The woman lived with her 65-year-old daughter, and the incident took place allegedly in the afternoon around 12:30 p.m. when the daughter had gone for a walk. Now, this is an NDTV report which says that when the daughter returned. She saw the woman's clothes were torn, and she was bleeding. According to Delhi Police, the daughter had filed a complaint about the theft of a mobile phone. Uh, police have now registered a case of theft along with other relevant sections, and investigation is currently underway. Also, in the news, India has banned 54 more Chinese apps that pose threat to, to the country's security. The apps include AppLock, Dual Space, Light, among other apps. In a statement, the ministry has said, and I quote: "These 54 apps allegedly obtain various critical permissions and collect sensitive user data. These collected real-time data are being misused and transmitted to servers located in hostile country." End quote. Earlier in June, if you remember. Last year, India had banned 59 Chinese apps, including TikTok, WeChat, PUBG, among others. In Karnataka, the High Court today struck down provisions of the Karnataka Police Amendment Act 2021, which prohibit and criminalize online gambling and betting. However, while clarifying that the court wasn't striking down the entire act. The bench added that it will not interfere if the state brings in a new law that is in consonance with the constitution. The act provides maximum uh, imprisonment of three years and penalty of up to one lakh rupees for violation of the provisions. On to some politics now. The Trinamool Congress today made a clean sweep in the civic polls to four uh, municipal corporations in West Bengal. Meanwhile, BJP on Monday moved Calcutta High Court demanding central forces for the remaining municipalities polls in West Bengal, which is scheduled for the 27th of February. The matter will be likely heard in the court on Tuesday. 
Moving on to COVID news now coming in from across the country, starting off with Gujarat because several states have now announced relaxations as COVID cases are declining. Uh, after two years, uh, almost after its closure, Gujarat has now decided to reopen Anganwadi centers, preschools and kindergartens in the state from Thursday, which is the 17th of February. Himachal Pradesh has also now announced relaxations. Uh, for instance, it's decided to reopen all educational institutions, gyms, cinema halls in the state from the 17th of February as well. Meanwhile, news from across the globe, according to Associated Press, Sweden is recommending a fourth COVID vaccine dose to people over the age of 80 and those living in nursing homes are getting home care. Now, the fourth dose must be administered no earlier than four months after the previous shot. According to the country's chief epidemiologist, a fourth dose strengthens the protection against severe disease. Moving on now to business news. According to data released by the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, the country's retail inflation, which is measured by the CPI or Consumer Price Index, rose to 6.01% in the month of January. Uh, additionally, the retail inflation for the month of December 2021 is revised to 5.66%. This is worrying as the January CPI data marginally breached the Reserve Bank of India's upper margin of 6%. Meanwhile, reacting to not just this, but several other things, Sensex crashed over 1,700 points to close at 56,405 in the worst fall that's happened in 10 months. Uh, the census fell uh, 1,747 points on Monday. Uh, this is the worst fall uh, that the benchmark indices has seen since April last year. Nifty plunged 531 points to close below the 16,900 level. Uh, investors were spooked because of fresh inflation data, subdued factory output of big bank fraud, and the spike in crude oil prices. Going on to news coming in from across the world right now, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has now said that evidence is pretty clear that Russia is planning an invasion of Ukraine. Mr. Johnson has cut short, uh, cut short his trip uh, to northwest England, as he said that there are, and I quote, Signs that show that there are serious preparations being made by Russia, end quote. More than a dozen countries, including UK and the US, have urged their citizens to leave Ukraine amid warnings of an imminent invasion, which Russia has so far denied. And one piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin, ISRO has launched its first mission of 20, uh, 2022, a polar satellite launch vehicle with two small co-passenger satellites at 5.59 a.m. today from Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. Now, EOS-04 is a radar imaging satellite capable of providing high quality images under all weather conditions. Two scientific payloads in this satellite are to improve the understanding of ionosphere dynamics and the sun's coronal heating processes. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.